Let's get right to it here. Tax bill. Have you read it? And do you know how you're going to vote on Tuesday? So I have not yet read it because it actually just came out last night in detail. We're spending the weekend, or rather Friday night, we're spending the weekend pouring over it. Uh, but the broad brush strokes of it lead me to the conclusion that I will not only vote against it, but vote against it with enthusiasm. I have two objections to it. Uh, the first of which is it's hugely deficit exploding. Uh, as you have reported so often before, mm -hmm. this is going to add $1.5 trillion to the deficit. And secondly, it's kind of Robin Hood in reverse. It literally gives more than 50% of the benefits of the tax cut to the wealthiest 1% in this nation. I don't think that's what's called for. But you know, Alex, <clears throat> the great irony I see here is that my Republican colleagues have evidently become born again Keynesians. And you and I can remember just eight short years ago when our nation's economy was in free fall. We had $16 trillion in net worth being wiped out. We had eight and a half million people losing their homes. And in order to stimulate the economy to grow it faster, we had a spending or a fiscal stimulus plan of a mere $700 billion, mere compared to the $1.5 trillion in this tax cut program, which the Republicans now say is necessary to grow the economy faster. At a time when the stock market is all time high, when unemployment is at a 17 year low, when corporate profits and cash reserves are at all time highs. So the fact of the matter is they're born again Keynesians, welcome aboard, but I think they're a little mistimed in their effort to get this economy stimulated and misdirected. What this nation desperately needs is increased productivity growth so that we can begin having more broadly shared wage growth. Which means <laughs> that you do not believe that which the Republicans have espoused, which is this trickle-down theory that it's going to go to the corporations, that all of their coffers will be open, they'll increase employment, they will rise with wages. You just, you don't see that happening then, is what you're saying. More importantly, Alex, neither does any mainstream economist in this country believe that that is the case. Which is why perhaps this tax bill uh, at this point remains deeply unpopular. All right, uh, let's move on to the Russia investigation. As you know, your fellow Democrats have sounded some warnings that the president and Republicans are kind of angling to shut down the congressional probes. What are you hearing on Capitol Hill about this? So let's bifurcate between the congressional investigations and Bob Mueller's investigations. There are exceedingly disturbing signs that House Republicans are becoming eager to shut down the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence investigation. That's highly premature. It, what it says is that they're more interested in getting it over with than in getting it right, and I'm deeply concerned about this. Uh, separately, however, we're beginning to see a drumbeat to undermine Bob Mueller's efforts, and I think that's frankly, well, let's put it this way. President Trump has a playbook, and if you open it up, there's one play in it, and it is ad hominem, attack, attack, attack. And what I find interesting about that is that he's misapplying a theory, his theory of political chaos, from the political theater to the legal theater. And what I mean by that is Bob Mueller doesn't care about all the public relations noise mm -hmm. and the political undermining that the president's attempting to engage in. This is a legal process. Prosecutors and judges don't care about this kind of ad hominem attack. What they care about is the facts, and that's clearly what Bob Mueller cares about, and he's going to get to them. You know, it's funny you describe him that way. My sense of him has always been that he's not listening to anything we are saying. He, he, yeah. he's, if we start talking about it, he's turning it off because he's the one who knows what he knows and what he has yet to know that he's trying to decipher and figure out. Um, I, will, I will say this from a political standpoint. The president's lawyer says Mueller's not going to be fired. We heard Mark Short just earlier with Chuck Todd saying he will not be fired. His surrogates are all saying, you know, they're cooperating with investigations in every way possible. So where do you think these rumors came from? What's the origin of them? Well, I think it's a part of their broader effort to undermine Bob Mueller so that mm -hmm. the political track, for example, within the Congress, and then just the general receptivity within the American public, but frankly, more accurately, within that ever narrowing base of supporters for the president. You know, when I think of Bob Mueller, Alex, I think of two words, integrity and professionalism. I think his entire career has frankly been a hallmark of those two uh, virtues.
So the likelihood of congressional hearings then continuing on till tw through into rather 2018, I mean, it, it stands to reason they will be. And, and who would your committee still like to hear from? I know you can't tell me anyone that you've officially asked, but, you know, in, in, well, in a wish, wish list? <laughs> Alex, if I cannot tell you any of those that we have spoken with, I certainly cannot tell you any of those with whom we would like to speak. Hey, you have to give me you a name this for every Come program. On. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Sorry. No, all right. Very quickly, may I talk about Alabama and that race. In fact, um, here's what Senate Majority Whip uh, John Cornyn says about the Roy Moore defeat. Here it is. I think the explanation for Alabama was we had a flawed candidate who won the Republican primary and who couldn't win the general election. That's really not a new lesson. That's an old lesson uh, remembered or uh, demonstrated once again. So did Republicans lose or did Democrats win? You know, that's just spin. It's not particularly good spin either because, Alex, we got multiple dots here forming a line. Let's not just look at Alabama. Let's look at what happened in Virginia. Let's look at what happened in New Jersey. Let's what ha look at what happened in some special legislative races in Michigan and Oklahoma and Washington State. And let's look at some mayoral contests throughout this country. Listen, there is no question but that 2018, the midterm elections, are a day of reckoning for what the majority party is doing right now and what President Trump has proposed. And in Alabama, by the way, let's take an example of why it is that House Democrats are going to compete in lots of places that they have not competed before. In Mo Brooks, Mo Brooks' fifth congressional seat in Alabama, Mo Brooks is retiring from the U.S. House, President Trump carried that last year by a margin of 65 to 31. That's an amazing landslide, 65 to 31. Mr. Moore and Senator-elect Jones virtually tied in that congressional district. That's where Huntsville is. That's where scientists are who work on rocket programs. And you know what? When the president's administration says we're not going to allow the use of terms like evidence-based and science-based, these scientists don't like that. We're going to see competitive congressional district races where nobody thought possible just a few short months ago. And just to add a very quick explanation, uh, exclamation point, rather, uh, in this new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, 50% of registered voters say they prefer a Democratic-controlled Congress. 39% want Republicans in charge.